All right. Well, Dr. Tager, welcome to the Unfiltered Healing Podcast. My pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, uh, Dr. Tager, I met you actually at a health event uh, a couple months ago, and which is why I asked you on the podcast today. But for those of you that may not know you, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself? And, you know, I love how you call, you've tagged yourself the healthcare synergist. So talk to us a little bit about, about who Dr. Tager is. Well, you know, so much in healthcare is creating these silos in which we've got one doctor looks after your heart and another one, your lungs and another one, your bones and joints. And what I've taken a little different approach, I've always looked for synergies. Where do we see things one plus one plus one equaling 10. So half of my career has been in an integrative functional medicine approach. And the other half, believe it or not, has been in aesthetics. I uh, helped create the Fraxel laser. I've been involved in, in that. And so I, I've tried to combine these two passions of helping people stay vital and strong from within and helping them stay beautiful on the outside. So that's culminated in some of the work I've done. And uh, I think we met around a discussion of the vagus nerve and its role in health and wellness. Uh, this was involved in, within a society, the vagus nerve society that I co-founded with a colleague. Hmm. Yeah. So, and that's, and <laughs> that's, that's who I am. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, thank you for that introduction. Um, you know, among your many skills and many passions, one of the things you are really excellent in talking about is the vagus nerve. And so that's why we brought you on the podcast today. What specifically um, sparked your interest in this nerve, or I guess, you know, this part of healthcare? What, what sparked your interest into that, into all the things that you were doing? I think there's a few things. Uh, one, certainly in medical school, we all learn about the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve, the wandering nerve. We all know <clears throat> that it, it, it is the longest nerve in the body. And those of us who look at the autonomic nervous system and this unbelievable system that keeps working and we don't have to think about it, um, we are breathing, uh, our gut is moving food along, we are responding to stimuli, and all this takes place on, uh, uh, automatically and without conscious uh, approval. So I have a long history of um, yoga, tai chi, meditation, and uh, you know, going back 40 years. And so I've always believed that we need to gain control over the as much as we can over the workings of this autonomic system. And so often today, you know, any clinician, we see people who are in sympathetic overload. They are wired, they are burned out, they're wired and tired. So okay. the extent to which we can exert some control over the parasympathetic, the rest and digest side of things, and take down this sympathetic, wired, cortisol-driven, Neuro, uh, neuroepinephrine driven anxiety. That's where so many people need to focus for health and healing. Oh, yes, tremendously. So, but for those people who may not know, you know, what the vagus nerve is, um, can you explain a little bit about why people should care about it so much? Because, you know, we have lots of nerves in our body. So, why is this specific one, you know, so trendy yeah. or yeah. so important? It has gotten trendy. You're right. It is the part of the, the autonomic system that is the easiest way to think about it is rest and digest, but it is parasympathetic. And I remember the P in that as being peaceful. So what it does is it slows heart rate. It opens and dilates the lungs. It um, is responsible for the normal motility of our gut. Um, it plays a, a, a key role in down-regulating inflammation. One of the real ways that we regulate inflammation in the body is through the vagus nerve. And there's something called the cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway. Now, 
I like to think that we are all electrochemical beings. That's who we are. And, and we focus so much on the chemical part of things, but we don't focus quite as much on the electrical part of things. And really, uh, we, this is, there are devices today that are almost like electroceuticals. Now, just an example. You can take an individual and you can measure the electro, electromagnetic rays coming off the, their electrical activity of their heart three feet from the body. So if you take two people who are three feet apart, the electricity of their hearts are touching. So we, we focus a lot on, on inflammatory markers, cytokines, little proteins that, that, that cause, that are responsible for parts of inflammation. But the vagus nerve is one of the mechanisms whereby they work. So if we can take down you know, the sympathetic discharge and we take down inflammation through the vagus nerve, this presents a powerful new therapeutic uh, modality for us to use in practice. Yeah, absolutely. And I can just like tail off of that. I mean, you know, the focus of health, I think for the past decade has been trending a lot to, um, you know, the role of the gut and gut health. And I just actually finished an excellent podcast with a microbiome specialist. And so that's super valid and, you know, super important. But, you know, you're right. There's been such a lack in the brain and the neurological system's role um, in even the gut and the gut function. And, you know, you said in your presentation when um, I was watching you a couple months ago that the vagus nerve is, is like a missing link to so many health issues. And I agree, you know, being a nervous system enthusiast myself as well. Um, can you go maybe into, you know, the roles of the vagus nerve or, you know, maybe we can go through each one of those roles at a time, but can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the gut and this concept of afferents and efferents. The mm -hmm. vagus nerve is a mixed nerve. 80% of it, 80 to 90% are going, are going from the organs to the brain. And, and then that is going back down, call that efferent, back to the organs. So, you know, it's like many other things. It's a, it's a, a cyclical kind of mechanism we have in the body. Now, we talk a lot about the microbiome and the bugs in the gut making things like neurotransmitters. They make most of the serotonin and they make uh, uh, a norepinephrine and dopamine. And we, we say that, that most of these neurotransmitters are made in the gut. But these neurotransmitters do not go through the blood-brain barrier. They, they do not, if you, when they get into the circulation, they do not make it into the brain. So there is a wall there called the blood-brain barrier. So really, how is it that they communicate to the body? Well, they communicate via the vagus nerve and via receptors uh, whereby these small molecules trigger um, little activity in the vagus nerve. These go up to the brain the brain sends signals back down, and that, um, that process is one in which they decrease inflammation. Now, the vagus nerve does some other pretty amazing things. Uh, one of the things it can do is the stimulation, non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation, um, can short-circuit migraines. And it does that because it, it, it stops something called uh, cortical spreading depression, which is really just the, the wave of depolarization, electrical depolarization in the brain that causes a headache. It downregulates some of these inflammatory neurotransmitters. Okay? Mm -hmm. It can the excited neurotransmitters, let's call it that way. It it can upregulate and increase some of the other things that are really good like um, BDNF, which is a, a protein, which is essential for plasticity of the brain. And we'll see in certain studies that people will have, have um, increased levels after non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation. Yeah, So that's all nice. exciting stuff. Great frontier <laughs> in medicine. We're starting to see a lot more of, 
uh, you know, people breathing. <laughs> That's breathing intentionally. I mean, they're already breathing, but but yeah. breathing intentionally so that stimulate the vagus nerve to to calm themselves. Um, putting yeah. one's face in a cold ice bath. Those are those are hacks. But I, I think there's a, a a new category of devices that are beginning to be very effective. Uh, very quickly using technology. And and that's what drew me to one of them, uh, which is a device called Gamma Core uh, from a company called Electrocore. It's a non-invasive vagus nerve stimulator. Yeah, I would love to be able to take 20 or 30 minutes and do Tai Chi every day and then spend another 20 minutes meditating and then do my yoga. <laughs> but there are days where you just don't have time for any of that. So right. this is a very efficient biohack. I you know, everything's a hack these days. This is a, a brain biohack to basically yeah. calm down the nervous system, center and focus. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later into, you know, ways to, to help the vagus nerve and stimulate it. Now, what are some of the ways that the vagus nerve could get damaged or ways that it, you know, is not necessarily working properly? Well, you know, there's there's actual damage that result of trauma but what you have in the body is you have imbalances i mean that's mm -hmm. really what we're mainly thinking about an imbalance in which the sympathetic the you know the fight or flight the stress response the, the um is balanced by the peaceful activities so you've got this sort of balance going on in the body one one pill takes you up another pill takes you down uh, but it's not a pill, it's, it's the nervous function. So it's not so much the damage to the nerve, although there are, you know, there can be, a, there can be surgical procedures, there can be uh, viruses, there can be uh, trauma, but, um, but really what we're talking about is an imbalance uh, and the need to strengthen our parasympathetic system. I mean, we see that with a simple thing like heart rate variability which is something that a lot of folks don't understand. But your heart is not supposed to beat absolutely on a regular basis. So it's not tick, 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 tick. There is slight variability in the interval between the heartbeats. And the more healthy side variability you have, which is heart rate variability, the healthier you are. And that's healthy, for, uh, and that is driven in large part by the vagus nerve and the sinus arrhythmias, the, the changes in the heart rate that occur with breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree, you know, a lot of that is because we're overstimulated in some other, you know, layers of our neurological system. Do you also think that it's, um, and this might be personal as well, but do you think it's also, you know, with the increase, since we're so electric and the increase of so much like outside electrical stimulation to our nervous system as well, do you think that plays a big role in its function or under function? Well, I wish I knew. I, I <laughs> wish I knew. I think, you know, uh, are there high voltage uh, uh, wires? Are there, are there cell towers? Uh, I mean, we're, we're putting our phones up to our head. I, I yeah. wish I knew the answer to that. I don't know that we have any definitive studies. I think some people will make that case. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I just haven't seen enough to, to really understand that well. Yeah, I think it's plausible. I mean, you know, if you put electricity on or near your body and think it doesn't affect it, it's, you know, plausible to assume it could. Um, so since the one could make yeah yeah um so since the vagus nerve you know it's so systemic and it has so many different functions and what it does which you've mentioned already um you know what are i guess some symptoms people could possibly have if it's not i guess working properly or like we've mentioned you know underutilized understimulated yeah so you know who are the kind of patients that a functional integrative physician sees. You start out, and if you just kind of go through from top to bottom, you start out with migraines, anxiety, depression, um, 
problems with brain fog, focus. Well, that's a, a brain component that, can, that all those are affected by the vagus nerve. We move on down to the voice, to, uh, to the voice box, actually. And then we move into the lungs. Um, so what the vagus nerve is responsible for the dilation of these, these airways. And um, it's really necessary. In fact, the device, the gamma core device, uh, was first developed by a physician who wanted a non, non-pharmacological way to help his son with peanut allergies. And mm. so this is uh, being the lungs. Now, the devices today don't really do much with the heart rate because those are the big fibers that they call the C fibers. But then we move into the gut and to the immune system. And again, 80% of that communication is going up, upward and afferent, and the most of that is coming from the gut, the liver, the spleen. But the gut is you know, obviously the richest uh, innervator of the body. So there we have conditions. Here's where we run into all of these motility conditions that people have. Where you know they are, they have, they're constipated. They have diarrhea. They have flatulence. They have belching. This is you know there's millions and millions of people coming to physicians that way, and and there is where we see the true synergies with um, the ability to address leaky gut by removing the offending agents for leaky gut. We see the ability to repair the gut that one cell thick lining in which we've got things like glutamine and zinc, carnosine and, and, and immunoglobulins. And we have uh, the, all of the, the uh, microbiome probiotics. So all of those are, um, are related to the vagus nerve and vagus nerve stimulation. Now, there are, are some other, in, if we look at the literature, there's some exciting things taking place in Parkinson's in studies that have looked at gait disturbance and using vagus nerve stimulation to improve gait. Uh, and there are studies right now, there's a very large study in Mayo going on with uh, long COVID, which is um, a lot of people believe that maybe the central insult is to the vagus nerve. And that's why we're, we're, we're not seeing these this rebound. So, uh, the vagus t- touches all of all of these areas. Uh, it is the the rare individ- the rare clinician who sees. I mean, maybe if people cut themselves or they bruise themselves, but but most of the the chronic the meta- metabolic conditions that we see um, mm-hmm. are influenced by the vagus nerve as well. So. Um, it is, it is a part and parcel of most of the chronic diseases that affect Americans today. Yeah, and s- sleep issues, right, as well, because it regulates the parasympathetic. Yes. And you know what we recommend when people use this uh, the gamma core device? We recommend that they do it, you know, four minutes in the morning and four minutes in the evening. And this can help get them into... Uh, uh, a deeper, more restful sleep um, because it gets that vagal nerve stimulation. You know, and then you'd, you'd add some other things like melatonin, and GABA uh, for those folks who have issues with sleep. Uh, sleep is such, an, such a problem for folks. Uh, the ability, you know, that is, and we think about sleep in a lot of ways, but, but one of the, the most important points is that at nighttime is when the microglia come out. They call them the nighttime gardeners. And they are the cells in the brain. They go and they clean up. They do a little pruning. They cut some things back that are that needed to be cut back. They make help to make new connections in the brain as well. So sleep becomes incredibly important for people. And everything we can do to get them a good night's sleep, uh, all of the things. But this is another adjunctive kind of component is the vagus nerve. I mean, one of the, the easiest and best things that people can do uh, before bedtime is to do deep breathing. Now, some people will do a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. 
inhalation, deep gut inhalation. You start at the gut, work up into the chest for a count of four. You exhale for a count of four, and you hold for a count of four. And I actually do a four and eight of myself, so I will go in for four, big fill it up, and then out for eight. And it's on the exhalation where the vagus nerve is being stimulated and where you're getting that heart rate variability and the slowing, the decrease in blood pressure as well as, as you, um, th that's where that, and the heart slows down there as well on the exhalation. Right, and for people that may not know, you know, that vagus nerve that, you know, comes out your skull, it goes down to the diaphragm. So that's why breathing helps, you know, regulate and stimulate yeah. it among other things. Good. Yeah. Uh, so for those that may not know anatomically where it is, that's one reason why they recommend, you know, proper diaphragmatic, because it's not just breathing, right? You got to breathe through that diaphragm to stimulate that vagus nerve. Yeah. Yes. Or, uh, I, so if you look at, if you look at chanting, when you are doing a long, prolonged OM, what are you mm -hmm. doing? You are using your diaphragm to basically push that air, I mean, you push that air out. And, you know, this is also a very helpful technique that people learn deep breathing if they give presentations or they want to, certainly singers know how to do this. But this sure. becomes an important tool in terms of being able to project, project one's voice, to get power in the voice. Mm -hmm. So the diaphragm is helpful for that. Well, yeah, and just so many people improperly breathe. So <laughs> you could probably train But everybody. I think they forget to, uh, <laughs> you know, the other thing is the improperly breathing is also, they hold their breath. I mean, yeah. people just, I'm up. They, they, they stop, stop breathing. And, and we really, you know, breathing is first aid for stress. So I, I yeah. think the idea of just mastering the technique, you know, if you go ahead and do any sort of heart rate variability monitoring, uh, when you deep breathe, you will see your heart rate variability, your coherence, your, your, your calmness really uh, improve. And that's, that's really what most of these apps will kind of show you that, hey, if you take some good deep breaths and relax your skeletal muscle and mm -hmm. sit up and put yourself in a position of power and calm yourself, everything improves uh, via this stimulation of the vagus nerve. Sure. And maybe with just your experience and expertise, um, what kind of changes have you seen, I guess, you know, with some of your patients or clients that you were having before you started doing like vagus nerve work and then kind of afterwards you started incorporating that for people or just, you know, what you've seen in the research or with your team? Um, the most dramatic work, uh, most dramatic results probably center on migraines and cluster headaches. So mm -hmm. clutter, cluster, most clinicians will never see a patient with a cluster headache. It is called a suicide headache. Mm -hmm. It is the worst pain imaginable. And um, in the work that ElectroCore has done in the UK, the UK will pay for the device to be used um, for patients with cluster headaches because they've deemed that it is effective. Um, the veterans hospitals in the United States pay for non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation for both cluster and migraine. And, and this is where you, I mean, if you want to see a dramatic improvement in anything, take away somebody's migraine. I mean, yep. sit them for four, eight, ten minutes, and, and, and non-pharmacologically improve their migraine. So yeah. that's essentially what, that's the most dramatic. Um, the next set of dramatic uh, things, certainly I think we're seeing a lot more on anxiety and depression and calmness. We've seen uh, in, in some studies, PTSD uh, symptoms, 31% improvement in PTSD. 
There's been work that's been done on a, acute stroke and actually using non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation, specifically this one device on both, on both kinds of strokes, uh, both ischemic and hemorrhagic, uh, in decreasing the, the lesion size. What's really fascinating, though, is the wellness applications of vagus nerve stimulation. So the Air Force just finished a, a, a major study in which they looked at a variety of devices and selected one, this gamma core device, um, with the drone operators and um, looked at their focus, fatigue, concentration, and their error rate, and, it, and found it was it, the vagus nerve stimulation was statistically significant in improving those, uh, those variables. So what does that make a difference? What difference? So you're a drone operator, and your ability to make fewer errors means that you are able to distinguish between a school bus and a tank. Yeah. Um, you have fatigue. You are sharper. So I, I, we will move into an era in which those of us who need that extra focusing, that extra second to reset our nervous system, either maybe before doing something in, in sports or giving a talk or any or preparing uh, for a stressful activity, would actually do a, few, a short stimulation of our vagus nerve, non-invasively, in order to have more energy, more focus, uh, less fatigue, better preparation, better perception. Uh, you know, because when you're when you get that initial shock of adrenaline, y your perception is off. So if you just had a little bit of extra edge there, um, to maybe it is that that little pause that can keep you out of trouble. <laughs> for sure, or or, or life or death in some of those situations, for sure. Right, life or death. You're right. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Now. You know, for me personally, I don't know if this is for you as well, but I, I would say nutritionally as well, because, you know, that's another one of your passions as mine is as well. Um, doing work with the vagus nerve and the nervous system prior to, you know, all of these nutrients and stuff to you. Me personally, I see so much better and dramatic results because, you know, that connection is working and they're actually absorbing what they're taking. And the same with like stress management. You know, sometimes you can tell people to go meditate all day long, but like some people just can't shut off their brain. <laughs> so, you know, right. I found working with the vagus nerve and these nerves is like so key for even success in some of those other, you know, methods of health. Sure. Yeah, well, this goes back to our concept of a being electrochemical being. I mean, mm -hmm. our, you know, we look at the GI process um, we've got to break down particles and so we can absorb them. So, and then we also need a gut that is moving, moving those nutrients and absorbing those nutrients. And the vagus nerve is, is critical for both of those. And, um, you know, there, there is a gut, brain, skin axis. And these three epicenters, these three organ systems, are connected both chemically and electrically. So we are always sending signals. So there's this communication between the gut microbiome and the skin. Now I can tell you when people have a dermatological issues, atopic dermatitis, they have psoriasis, they have eczema. Um, in the old days, physicians used to say, oh, your diet doesn't matter. And now today, all of the current practitioners know that when you have those conditions, you have to look at the gut because the gut-skin connection is, is powerful. And so we'll, we'll see that with even simple things like acne, uh, in which we've got a, a gut-brain-skin connection. Uh, we have, have the microbiome. Remember, it is talking to the brain which is talking to the skin. Gut is talking to the skin. So this communication, it, it, is, it is as if we put roadblocks up 
or we put too much uh, traffic down a little country road, uh, mm -hmm. we, we get issues all along there. So, you know, I, and again, if you look at diet, I mean, we shift over to diet, uh, classically, you take something like acne. I mean, dairy, sugar, good studies showing that relationship. Uh, we'll often see zinc deficiencies in, in, in people, particularly teenagers, I mean, and saturated fats, obviously. So what is the recipe for acne? It's called the teenage lifestyle, <laughs> sugar, milk <laughs> products, fatty, you know, fat, fatty foods, uh, lack of zinc, uh, lack of sleep, and throw in raging hormones and you've got acne. <laughs> It's that good old cold cereal, you know, snack. <laughs> the milk and cereal teenage snack, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Especially, and do it late at night too. Come home late at night, and uh, and so we don't have any window for uh, for housekeeping and uh, autophagy to sort of right. prepare our body for the next. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many facets to that. Um, yeah, that is super interesting. You know, the gut and the brain and the skin and, you know, most people thinking of the skin, they might look to their gut for sure. Um, but they may not think of it with the brain. And that's super important to connect those together. And if you're not, if you're struggling with skin stuff and you've done all the gut health, but you haven't addressed like what's telling the gut to do what it's doing, you got to look to the brain too, right? Yeah, I look to the brain, but also, you know, I'm big proponents of nutrigenomics. And I, I think this is shedding so much light on individualization and personalization. Because in, in a lot of ways, the vagus nerve and vagus nerve stimulation is really a treatment for everybody. Sure. Uh, I mean, it, it is a tonic. You can think of it as, as a tonic treatment. I mean, you brush your teeth uh, twice a day, three times a day. We, you could do vagus nerve stimulation eight minutes a day, and you do it like you do push-ups or sit-ups or um, stretches. So it's, a, it's really tonic. It's really in a lot of ways for everyone. But then when you go down the, the path of personalized nutrition, you know, there's no other person on the planet with skin like yours. Uh, mm -hmm. And so why you need an individualized approach. And there's so many things that we can do to shed light on that. We can look at um, serum values, blood, we can draw blood. Uh, we can look at things like folic acid and iron. We can look at minerals, zinc being a big one, and magnesium and copper to some extent. We can look at um, IgG levels uh, for food sensitivities. And, some, and very often, sometimes that will give us very good information. Sometimes we just see people come back with, with everything out of whack and we know we're just dealing with leaky gut uh, right. where in which things are just pulled the body. But then also you move into nutrigenomics. What's fascinated me about this is the two sides of the coin. This calls nutritional genetics. First of all, your genes determine how you, your preferences, what you taste, how you smell things, how you, how you perceive smells. It, uh, your genes determine how you break down lactose or alcohol or your uh, tendency to glycate, which is attached sugar to proteins. So those are your genes and they predispose you to going in a certain area. And, and that's, we have these SNPs, these single nucleotide polymorphisms, these genetic variants, and they predispose us there to certain um, increased or decreased needs for certain conditions. Well, on the other part of that, it's even more fascinating, is that your gene, your food, is turning on or off hundreds and hundreds of genes. That is the, the regular, what you eat, is one of the ways that genes get turned on or turned off. So if you eat foods with high levels of glyphosate, for example, mm -hmm. you are turning on or off genes. If you eat foods that are charred animal proteins, um, you are turning on and off certain genes. If you are eating 
um, bok choy, broccoli, um, beans, you are turning on or off certain genes. So I think this is this becomes a, a critical component of, of well-being. And certainly the nutrigenomic testing is getting better. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're starting to see really good reports. I use one called Nutrigenomics with an X. And they have a, by, by the way, they have a skin health and beauty report that I, I recommend. That I recommend it in my book, Feed Your Skin Right. And uh, because you can look at things like uh, the influence, uh, the how your genes influence your MMPs, uh, your matrix metalloproteinases that break down collagen elastin. Some mm -hmm. people also have a preponderance genetically for pigmentation or for glycation. Again, the, the attachment of of uh, a uh, sugar molecule to a protein. When it happens in the skin, it's attached to collagen. That collagen is becoming much more brittle. We get more fine lines and crepiness to our skin. Uh, we have to look at how we handle vitamin C, vitamin E, yeah. zinc. Um, all of these things, our genes will inform us. And that's why some person, for one person, you know, uh, a thousand or 5,000 units mm -hmm. of vitamin D are not enough. They need more than that, perhaps for a day. Or some why some people need vitamin C. Well, you'll take let's say you'll take a vegan who um, actually needs that vitamin C and iron in order mm -hmm. to convert uh, and collagen in their skin. Mm -hmm. But now let's say they have a SNP, a genetic variation, in which they don't handle vitamin C as well. They need many times more vitamin C. So now we've looked at a combination of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, and dietary choice with nutrigenomics. And you can even throw on top of that, let's say, a medication. So mm -hmm. let's say you've got people taking statin or a, a blood pressure uh, uh, pills or um, birth control pills. They yeah. also will decrease and deplete some of these. So, you know, I, I, when we do a, a complete personalized nutrition assessment, um, these are some of the, the factors. And I talk a lot about that in my book, Feed Your Skin Right. So that's been a, a major piece of the work that I do. So I, you, I mean, you and I share these twin loves. I mean, I'm <laughs> yes. in love with the Vegas nerd. It's fascinated me uh, ever since I did my first yoga class. And then increasingly, you know, I mean, I started a nutrition class for medical students when I was a medical student way, way back at Duke. And, uh, you know, I've always been fascinated by that. Now we just know so much more. We can personalize nutrition, and that becomes incredibly exciting. So, uh, so those are my my twin loves. I, I love my dog, my wife, my kids. Uh, not in that you can pick the order that works. My dog is close to me, so she, she's she's uh, she's getting first dibs here. She's here. The wife and kids aren't. But but I think the point is that um, you know if, if you look at this, you've got stuff that everybody needs to do. And that's this master as best you can the workings of influencing your autonomic nervous system uh, in terms of parasympathetic tone, paras get, work that muscle. You know, think of it yeah. as a muscle. And then uh, on the nutrition side of things, we have to go much more, obviously there's stuff that everybody should do. You know, don't sure. do the standard American diet that they had. Uh, get closer to your food sources, eat the rainbow, get a lot of fiber because that's what the bugs like. And the bugs, by the way, in your gut, don't just make the butyrate, which helps heal the lining of the gut. They make acetate and propionate, two other short chain fatty acids that go into the skin, uh, in circulation, find their way into the skin and are correlated significantly with acne, by the way. And they have something to do with barrier protection. So those are just uh, some sort of thoughts about both of my loves. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we, we definitely share very similar views on all of that. And customization is always key. So I think even, you know, the topic that we're talking about today, 
Um, sometimes it is even customizing what you're doing and, you know, someone may not like certain things and it's, that's okay. You know, you do what, what works for you and what helps to regulate those systems. And, and absolutely, we have to have a good foundation for um, our body to even function, you know, autonomically well. Now, we've talked about breathing. Um, we've talked a little bit about your, you know, uh, simulator. Um, I love doing, you know, cranial and body work with people to release the vagus nerve. Do you have any other, um, do you have any other suggestions? And we can go into your stimulator too in just a moment um, about, you know, what exactly it does and how that all works. Um, what are some of your other, you know, if you have any favorites or other things people can do? You know, we, it's interesting. This has been interesting for me because I normally travel 150 to 170,000 miles a year. I've done it for 35 years. Uh, that's probably why my relationship with my wife is so good. It shouldn't, you know, you get on a plane, go someplace. We, and I joke that we've only been really together for like seven or eight years. Um, but when the pandemic, um, you know, everything changed, obviously. I, 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 got, we, I got my two-year sentence, as did we all, and we stayed home. And my dog was really, really, really happy. And uh, so what I did, it was I did my first garden ever. And I have this enormous garden in my backyard. I'm fortunate to have a big enough yard for a garden. And several times a day, I leave my phone in my office at home. Yeah. And I go out and I watch, I watch the hummingbirds and I have my little discussion with the plants. You know, they talk to me, talk to me about their needs. Uh, you know, do they need water? Do they need uh, netting because the sun is hot? And, and that is a moment, I think, of, of just learning to calm down. And when I'm out there, I, I have no distractions. So I do believe that people need to find a practice or an activity that is meditative for them. Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, I like the idea of being out in nature because that is, there's a lot to be gained there in terms of connecting, connecting with the elements. Uh, but we all, you know, and, and again, when we work, when you work with patients, when I've worked with patients, you sort of try to help them find that that peaceful place, yeah. uh, that meditative place where time sort of stops. And uh, you and what you're doing are just one. You're there observing. You're being mindful. You are being present. Uh, and we live in such a, dis a world of such distractions. That, yeah. uh, you, unless, if you don't build that in, those... Ah, uh, moments. Um, you know, then life will pass you by and uh, um, you just won't have this great equality experience. And I, I venture to say you will live longer if you do that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Nature is a big one for myself. Whenever I'm in nature, I can just feel my nervous system going, thank you. So, you know, it's great to just disconnect even, you know, that's messages for us too in our busy lives um okay let's go into a little bit of the the device so um you know yeah. how does that work exactly you know, yeah so you've got a basically three ways that you can stimulate the vagus nerve the first is an implantable device i mean mm -hmm. it's a significant operation expensive operation where they essentially wire uh, wrap a wire around your um, uh, your your vagus nerve. Uh, there's a sensor, and you are getting uh, stimulation that way. Uh, and they're doing a lot for epilepsy. It's it's FDA cleared for that. But there there are two other ways. One is you can clip a little something to your ear or put a little band on your head, and that gets a small percentage of the afferent fibers. Um, uh, but the, the device, is the Gamma Core device from a company called ElectroCore, has been elegantly designed to hit the superhighway, which is the vagus nerve right at the neck, right where your 
where your carotid artery is. And very safely, they deliver these two-minute stimulations. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, a treatment is two two-minute stimulations. You feel a little tingle. It's very safe. It does not affect the cardiac fibers. And um, the device is FDA. It's a prescription device at the present time. And it's FDA cleared from migraines and cluster headaches, uh, including that, by the way, is menstrual migraines, which is an enormous problem for women. I mean, uh, yes. it's, we see, and, and perium and, and menstrually related migraines, which can also be when, when you get a drop in estrogen, for example. Uh, so we'll see it with that. Um, so I, that, that's a very, it's an intriguing device. We, we, for those professionals um, who are listening, they might want to join the Vegas Nerve Society. It's free. Right now, it's vnvegasnervesociety.org. And it's a, a group of, of clinicians from around the world who f are multidisciplinary. So we've got naturopaths and chiropractors, and we've got researchers and academics and neurologists and chiropractic neurologists and internal medicine docs and family docs and functional and integrative medicine, uh, all professionals who recognize that the, the vagus nerve is a, you know, be, the ability to influence that can be very, very helpful for, for their patients' outcomes. And you serve on the board of that society as well, too. Is that correct? Yes, I, I actually co-founded that with a very esteemed colleague, Dr. Peter Stotz, who is, uh, uh, he started the pain, interventional pain program at Johns Hopkins. He's mm -hmm. the president of the World Institute of Pain been president of uh, the North American Society. He has got over 450 peer-reviewed articles. He's, so he's been one of the real leaders in, in the field. And uh, he and I recognize this need for to educate and train our colleagues, um, and which is really the joy of this presentation. Now, right. if we had our druthers, I, you know, I would put up the slides and show you <laughs> what is statistically significant what isn't, but if you, you know, if you look at migraines and cluster headaches, you look at the effects on the lungs, uh, you look at the ability to, to perhaps influence Parkinson's and stroke and uh, anxiety and depression, you see this constellation of neurological uh, applications, you see the pulmonary applications, you see the GI applications, but really, you know, you, what we haven't focused on quite as well is how the vagus nerve down regulates inflammation. Now, just as an example, curcumin, okay, we all lean on it, turmeric, curcumin, this ancient herb from India. Well, how do you think it works? Well, it works via re the ability to touch and plug into receptors on the vagus nerve fibers that regulate acetylcholine, that down-regulates these inflammatory molecules, these cytokines. So as we learn more and we do more research, we're starting to see that, yes, we are electrochemical beings. Uh, the superhighway is the vagus nerve. The best way to access that non-invasively is right at, at, at the neck very safely with non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation. So this is a frontier of medicine. Now, there's other frontiers, of course. Talk about personalized nutrition. There are stem cells. There are exosomes. There are um, yeah. all sorts of nutraceutical molecules, NAD, that we talk about. Uh, but again, it's, we're so tempted to be into the chemistry, um, particularly we learn these biochemical pathways, um, we all know about the Krebs cycle and other, you know, pathways of nutrients and what's affected, but we've neglected the electrical side of the healing process. Yeah, absolutely. It, with your device, you mentioned you've used it for like epilepsy and, and things of that nature. How, do you guys have any? I well, I'm sorry, please. Oh, I was going to say, do you guys have any uh, research? Are you working on anything of using it with like um, 
uh, you know, neurobehavioral things like autism or um, ADHD. I mean, I just know personally from offhand, you know, doing cranial work with these children, um, they like melt on my table afterwards. You know, it, it just, it works so well to stimulate the vagus nerve into. Um, so I just wondered with, you know, your uh, devices or research, have you guys been looking into any of those facets of its utilization? Yeah, let me clarify that the epilepsy is at the implantable device. Is oh, implantable, sorry, epilepsy. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's implantable, but so have we, there are researchers worldwide looking at some of those applications. We mm -hmm. have uh, electrical, uh, you know, ha uh, has no studies that I know of going on with that. There are researchers looking, and, and look, there, there are other uh, devices. There are the ear, the ones that clip onto the ears and do a small percentage of fibers. There's bands that you can wear on your head that also access some of the fibers as well. But um, the the number of studies is truly staggering. Uh, the ones that I've seen, that Electrocore is looking at, right, they're also looking at, at opioids and, and opioid addiction. That's yeah. another major area uh, of stimulation of the vagus nerve. I don't know uh, of, uh, I think there are studies in uh, ADHD, um, but not, not to the extent of some of these other lower lower hanging fruit uh, sure. things. And certainly uh, cognition is a big thing, brain fog. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm really excited about the study being done at Mayo uh, for long COVID and specifically looking at brain fog. Now there were studies done through the VA on PTSD sure. and uh, showed a significant reduction in the triggers. Uh, and, and actually they did that uh, with a double-blinded sham study, in which they had a fake device. So uh, that, was, that was impactful as well. So it's an exciting area, lots yeah. of research. Uh, periodically put things up on the website uh, on the Vegas Nerve, uh, vnsociety.org. And those okay. folks who want to track uh, what's going on should just come, come visit often. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, is there anything on uh, is there anything on brain injuries or concussions yet are in the making? Yeah, there is. Uh, that work has mainly been in animal models. There are okay. studies. Uh, and there's studies that have been done at Harvard with di with different animal models, looking at improvements in in, in uh, through with concussion with vagus nerve. Uh, I. I there are discussions underway to do some large trials or clinical studies, uh, perhaps with uh, populations of athletes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so, but uh, no definitive work at this time, just animal studies. Okay. Yeah, great. Lots to be done. There's a lot, there's <laughs> a lot of work to be done. A lot of work. So over the yeah. next five years, all this unfolding research and uh, Five years from now, we'll look back and we'll say, whoa. You know, yeah, look, it's look exciting. It's definitely exciting. And, you know, to have something that's non-invasively helping people's health, you know, go back to the basics. It's just extraordinary what, you know, proper regulation of this nerve does for the body. So, you know, maybe what's like one tip you could leave the listeners with either for the vagus nerve or, you know, for skin health, as you were talking about your book, and we'll um, shout out how they can get that in a minute. Maybe what's what's uh, something you could leave the listeners with today? Yeah, you know, the simplest one would be breathe often. Yeah. Focus on the breath. I mean, that's the easiest first aid for stress. I did a book. 20 years ago called Transform Rest into Power. And it was true then. It was true for every yogi who's ever walked the planet. Um, yoga is really the yoke with the breath. So I, I just think that if we would spend our time there, that, that is time we spent. And as far as skin health and beauty from the inside out, which is, you know, our book is Feed Your Skin Right. Uh, you know, everybody asks me, What's the one thing I should do? Sure. I say, well, 
There is one thing, but it depends. So the book itself, we talk, we provide the answers to four questions. What should I eat? What supplements should I take? What topicals should I apply? And what procedures should I have? And it really is an individual process. But the, the strongest, I guess the advice that I have for most people, and I don't know that anybody really wants to hear it, is we cannot out supplement your crappy diet. So uh, there is no boatload of supplements in the world that will out um, that will out supplement the the deleterious or the advantageous components of your diet. Mm -hmm. And Mother Nature, you know, when you go out and you look at those those plants, of course the the ones the darker ones are being eaten by my moths now, but I've got to deal with that in my garden. <laughs> but you want to eat the rainbow. Uh, Mother Nature, Mother Nature put out these 5,000 phytonutrients in plants. Their job is to protect that plant from UV radiation, from the environment, and that's what you gain. In fact, when you eat a plant-rich diet of multiple colors, you're actually taking an SP, providing your skin an SPF of someplace between three and five. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. SPF 30. Your mineral blocks, your zinc and titanium, you need that but you will get some UV protection by eating a great diet, rich in phytonutrients. Amen. I think there's another saying too. It's like, you can't out exercise a bad diet as well. So you just can't. That, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the other one. Absolutely. <laughs> and you can't out a bad diet. Good, good. No, it's so true. Yes. Well, how do people find your book? Um, okay. and uh, my how book do is find called Feed Your Skin Right, and you can grab it on Amazon. And uh, you know, it's a good read. I think uh, uh, we've got a training course for both practitioners and consumers coming out. The training course is called Inside Skin Beauty that will be out uh, as a nine-hour training course for professionals and the consumer one uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, to get a hold of me, you can hit me up on Instagram at drmtager. My personal website is just drtager.com, drtager.com. Uh, you can grab me on LinkedIn. So those are three great places. You can email me at contact at drmtager.com. Uh, drtager.com. My and you, Instagram you have... is at dr. This is frustrating. My Instagram is at drmtager. And my uh, my URL is doc, just Dr. Tager. Ah, the joys, <laughs> of, uh, the joys of the internet. Now, can they find information on your website about the uh, stimulator as well? Or is that totally uh, different? You know, what they can what they would do, that's totally different. They, okay. I, I would encourage uh, clinicians to go to the vnsociety.org. I would encourage other folks to go to gammacore.com, G-A-M-M-A-C-O-R-E.com, and they can learn about the stimulator there. It is a prescription device. Mm -hmm. and, and for those people who suffer from migraines, they can just uh, get the prescription online, uh, but you can actually get this from many of the integrative functional physicians uh, as well. So that's, that's where that's at right now. Excellent. Well, we just thank you so much. We know you're super busy uh, for taking time out to talk to us today. We're so thankful. Thank you for your continued research. Um, we all have a part to play in getting this information out. So we just thank you so much for being on the podcast today. And uh, for everyone listening, we will uh, thank you for listening and we'll catch you on the next episode.